Hey guys, Vicki here from Orchid Owl Quilts in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm here today with my wonderful friend, Emily, who is a longtime customer and we've now officially adopted her. So now she's just our friend and she comes here all the time to help us because yes. she's lovely. <laughs> um, today we're gonna talk about how to pick thread color for your quilt. And I think this information will be really beneficial for long arm quilters who quilt for other people or if you quilt for yourself and you're not sure what color thread to pick, this will hopefully give you some insight on how to do that and how we choose colors and help our customers pick colors for their quilts. So are you ready, Emily? I'm ready. Okay, the first quilt we're gonna talk about is a Quilt of Valor. And because it is such a high contrast fabric and we have white with blue and red, it can be a little tricky to pick thread colors for something like this. So we're gonna audition about six or seven colors and see what we like the most. So Emily, have you ever had trouble picking thread colors for your quilts? All the time. And what do you usually look for? I tend to pick what matches my background and I don't know if that's always the right choice. It can be. Sometimes, like with this quilt, since we have so much white fabric mixed with really dark reds and blues, it can be a little tricky because we don't know if we should pick red or blue or white. And sometimes the right answer may not even be any of those. It could be gray. So we first laid out a medium gray and then let's grab the silver. And it's also important I should note that you don't wanna just lay the cone on here and try to make a decision. You want to unspool it and lay it out over all of the colors that are in your quilt so you can kinda of get an idea of what it's gonna look like on all of the different fabrics. So next, we have a lovely light blue. And then... Can I see what the white looks yes, like? Yes, let's try the white. Okay. Oh. Mm. So what do you think about that? I think the white shows up really bright on the red and the blue. Yep. My first instinct was white just because I didn't want the thread to take away from the piecing. And around here, we have a lovely term for that. We call that thread barf. When we pick a thread color that is way too overpowering for the quilt, when you look at it, you tend to only see the thread and it can kind of look like it's been scribbled on. And we don't necessarily want that. We want our quilting to kind of fade to the background. So you've also laid on here a darker blue which looks really great over the blue fabrics and it also looks great on the red, but it's really, really overpowering on the white. So that one for really me bright. is probably a no, but let's keep looking and see what else we have. So this is another light blue and this one also Ooh. works pretty well. And then we have the scary red. <laughs> Ooh. We don't use red very often. The quilt has to really have a lot of red fabrics in it for us to pick a red thread because Ooh. it can be a lot. And it's very much one of those colors that can turn into looking like thread barf really quickly. So if it's really bright, it's really bright on isn't it? everything. So Emily, which one is your favorite? Tough decision, huh? It is a tough decision. I feel like this happens every quilt. So let's do this. Which one should we eliminate? I think we should get rid of this one. I think we should definitely get rid of the red. Yep. Let's get rid of the dark it's blue too and much. the red. And you, what ends up happening is you, you're going to miss all the hard work as, as a piecer. Yes. Because all you're going to see is the thread. Yeah. You're not going to see the lovely piecing and the design, even if we picked a really simple edge to edge design or simple quilting, it's just gonna be way too overpowering. So I think that's a good call to eliminate those two. What do we think about this darker gray? I like it on the darker fabrics. Me too, but it's still a little bit much on the white. Yeah. Yeah, so I think let's get rid of this one. Um, I said originally that I was leaning towards white, but after pulling the thread colors, I've kind of changed my mind and I know which one's my favorite. Oh no. Yeah. Want to take a guess? The gray? No. Oh, <laughs> wrong guess. Wrong. <laughs> Fine. The gray is my favorite. 
Okay, it's not a bad answer. And it's not a wrong answer. We should put it that way. There's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer except for the ones we already took off. Those are wrong answers. I actually really like the light blue, which oh. surprises me because I wasn't thinking that that was the direction I was going to go. But I like how it shows up on the white very subtly, but it looks really good on the blue and the red fabrics. The gray also works. But it does read for more me, white. when I look at the blue and the gray thread on the blue fabric, the gray tends to look a little bit more stark and the blue blends a little bit better. So I think that's why I would personally pick the blue, but there's also really nothing wrong with the gray. It would work as well. So you can kind of see sometimes there's not one right answer. It's just the one you like the most. Let's talk about the white thread. It would also be a really good option. The only thing that makes me like the blue and the gray better is that the white thread looks really, really stark on the dark fabric. So it's really going to be a high contrast, whereas these two blend a little bit better. So for me, I would probably eliminate this one just for the fact that I like these two better. And then between these two blues, they're basically the same and they're just slightly different in shade. I still like this one better, so we would probably eliminate, just get rid of that one. So one other thing we need to consider with this quilt is we're using a very dark blue backing. So that can be a little tricky as well because for us here at the shop, we typically match our top thread and our bobbin thread in color so that we eliminate the problem of pokies on one side or the other if our tension gets slightly off, which can happen when you're long arm quilting because just a little tiny piece of lint can throw everything off. So you have to be really diligent with keeping your machines clean. So we tend to match our colors on top and bottom and for this particular quilt, we are going to have pretty high contrast on the back, but that's generally okay. If we take a look at our bobbin thread, we actually use bottom line in our bobbin, so it's a thinner thread, and it will just kind of fade and melt into the background. And so even though it's a little bit light on this fabric, once it's quilted and the stitches sink in, it will be beautiful. What weight is the top thread? This top thread is a 40 weight, so it is thicker than what we use in the bobbin. And if we lay them out next to each other, you might be able to see the difference in the thicknesses of the thread. Yeah, the top thread definitely shows up a yeah. lot more. Another really good benefit of using bottom line in the bobbin and it being a 60 weight thread is that we can load a lot more thread on our bobbins and we can quilt a lot longer without having to change our bobbins. So that makes it really nice when we're long arm quilting because time is money and the less we have to change our bobbin, then the faster we can get done. And I think the stitches look beautiful on the back. Yeah. All right. So how are you feeling about this one? I like it. I think it's going to be really good. Then we just have to pick a design, but that's a topic for another day. And sometimes the thread leads you to the design. Yes. And sometimes the design leads you to the thread. Exactly. For this one, we'll probably go with some type of patriotic design. So maybe some stars or something like that. It will fit very nice with the theme of the quilt since it is a quilt of valor for our local group. And one other tip to always keep in mind before we move on to the next quilt, it's generally better if you have a lighter color thread on dark fabrics as opposed to really dark thread on light fabrics. So just keep that in mind the next time you need to pick thread color for a quilt. You guys, let's talk about this quilt that Emily made. You have to tell us more about this one. So I took Tula Pink's Everglow line as well as her tiny dots and stripes and just had to make Elizabeth Hartman's robots. And look. It's so cool. Let's talk about rainbow robots, right? Oh, oh my gosh. How adorable. Yes. And you fussy cut their bellies, right? So fun. So cute. And what did you use for their eyes? I used Kona Cotton's Shimmer. 
Oh, yeah. Did you get yeah. that from us? I did. Oh, I love oh, it. Oh, my gosh. It's so cute. It's a funny story. I actually came in with two fat quarter bundles of Tula Pink's fabric, and I said, ladies, I'd like to make Elizabeth Hartman's robots, yeah. but there is so much variety, I don't know what to do with the background. And um, Kelsey, who works at Orchid Owl Quilts, actually looked at the fabric wall and said, you know, that eggplant's really speaking to me. And I said, really? And as we pulled fabric together, I was like, yes, that is it. It's gorgeous. It's going to be amazing. Oh, I love it. Now, how in the world are you going to pick thread color? Because we have an eggplant background with the rainbow. Yeah. So what are we going to do? Maybe start with matching the background. Okay. It might be a little dark, but we can definitely try. So we have this. Let's see. It's like a burgundy color almost. So it's not an exact match to the fabric, but when we take it down to one single strand, it does look like it's almost a perfect match. So when we look at this color, it's almost a perfect match for the background, but I'm a little bit worried about how it's going to look on our lighter colors. So let's take a look at it like over the yellows. Now, Ooh. do you see what happens? It looks almost black. It does look almost black. So that's probably not the way we want to go, but let's look at it also over a few more of the colors just to see what we think. So let's look at it over the lavenders. Ooh. Yeah, it's still really dark. So I'm not sure that that's going to be our best option. Yeah. I feel like it takes away from the piecing. Right. And it kind of makes it, it like hides it. It would be very overpowering for your adorable robots. So I think we need to eliminate that one. So okay. Let's get this one out of the way because we know that's a no. Yeah. Um, any other ideas? What's your favorite colors? Purple. <laughs> and teal. And teal. Guess what? I have teal thread. <laughs> Let's do teal. <laughs> Let's see. I might know you because I know you love teal. And we do have teal it's a robots. Problem on the other side. I yes. think they're on your corner. So let's just see what we think. So we have teal robots on this side along with blue and green. So let's just kind of lay it out and see what we think. Not I like terrible. the teal on the teal. Yeah, looks pretty good. It even looks really good over the green and the blue. And what about the orange though? Right, because I also really like it on the purple. But what about our lighter colors, the yellow and the orange? So let's flip it back to the other side because we want to make sure we like it over all of our fabrics. We don't want to just like it on some. So let's take a oh, look. It's nice on the purple. It is nice on the purple. I'm not sure I'm loving it on the yellow because look how dark it gets. Yeah. And even on these lighter lavender colors, it gets really dark. So I'm not sure that that's our best option, but Might be I a say little too much. let's not eliminate it just yet. Let's keep it in the running and we'll see what we think about our other colors before we make a final decision. So let's try a real oddball. Yeah. Let's try some orange because you really never know what's going to work unless you lay it out and take a look at it. Some of the fun is laying out the thread to see what it looks like. Yes. And it gives you a really good idea of how it'll turn out at the end. Right. What do you think about it on the purple? On your background? I... I don't like it. It's very... And I don't know if it's because it's warm with warm. It's a very bold choice, yeah. right? <laughs> Like it might work for some people. Um, I think it's a little bit much on the purple. I think that it's gonna be a little bit overpowering and especially depending on what design we pick, it could get a little messy looking yeah. because it's gonna be very prevalent as part of the design. Right. So if it were mine, I think we could eliminate it. Okay, so I have a really odd choice, but I thought let's try it because you never know. It. Let's try some highlighter yellow. So it might be a little scary, but you never know until you try. In small quantities. 
it looks really great on the yellow. It does. <laughs> and it doesn't look half bad on the orange and even the lavender. But on the purple, it's kind of giving the same vibe as the orange thread where it's a lot. A lot. It's a lot. So, and it might not go as well on the darker colors. Right. So let's take a look at the other side just to see. Yeah. You know, it doesn't look half bad on the green. But it's and the aqua, a lot on the blue. But it's a lot on the blue, and I still don't love it on top of the purple. So I think yeah. we can probably eliminate that one, too. Yep. All right. Now, what do you have on your side? I have perhaps a light purple. That could work because it could blend with our background and also look really nice on all of the different colors of the robots. So we'll just kind of string it out here. Is this a good example of a thread might look better, lighter thread on darker backgrounds? Yes, exactly. Because it's gonna blend really nicely with our background purple and it should look pretty good with most of our colors. But let's take a closer look. When we lay it on the yellow. It's quite dark. It kind of almost takes on a gray tone. Don't yeah. you think? It kind of starts to look like it's not Almost really like lavender. And, Ooh. you know, maybe not, maybe not our favorite. Let's look at it on our colors back here. It looks really good on the blue robots and even on the green and the aqua. So it's not, not bad. It's not bad. I think we're getting close to something that would actually work for us for this quilt. Um, I say we don't eliminate it yet. Okay. I think we should try one more and then we'll make a choice. We'll make a decision. How about pink? Pink is my favorite. So let's see what happens. Pink is not my favorite, <laughs> but. Pink should be your favorite. <laughs> it has essence of eggplant. Yes. That's what we're calling it. So far, it looks really good <gasps> on all of our robots. It looks so nice on the It on does the look really nice on the turquoise. What about on this side? Let's move our threads. Who would have thought? Right? This is kind of another oddball because you wouldn't think about kind of a hot pink on purple, but I think it actually works really well. It looks really <gasps> good. It looks super nice on the yellow. It looks great on the yellow. Who would have thought? It looks great on the lavender. It's a little bit of a contrast on our eggplant background but not so much that it's gonna look like thread barf, right? It's gonna just kind of blend in. And once we pick our quilting design, something textural probably. Yes. Then I think it's, I think it's my favorite. What do you think? I think so too. I like the pink. Even though you're not a pink girl. No, I'm not a pink girl. I definitely like it better. Like when we look at this yellow guy, Yes. I think we should eliminate this one for sure, the dark turquoise, because I think it's just too much. It's too dark for our light. When light you put colors. it next to the different, the, the lighter threads, it does come out yeah. way darker than we originally thought. It's a little thought. bit too much. Yeah. So I think we can safely be down to the pink and the lavender, but my first choice would definitely be the pink. I think I like it the most because I don't love how the lavender can kind of go gray yeah. on some of the fabrics. We I, want it to have color. Yeah. And I do like the way that the pink holds its color throughout against all of the all other of the colors different ones. Well. It never kind of changes or looks like a different color. And it's really pretty on all of your fabrics. So before we make our final decision, what did you pick to use for your backing? I actually picked I'm very excited. Ooh, I love this one. Yes, I picked this backing from the shop. Um, yes. Which comes in a three yard cut, um, which, and it's sateen. It's, it's so, so lovely. Oh, nice. But unfortunately for you guys, you can't have it because we sold out. So you need to keep an eye on our website when we get all of our new backings in so you don't miss out on the gorgeous, gorgeous Amazing. fabrics. It's so drapey and soft. It looks gorgeous with your robots. Yes. So again, Ooh. since we match our thread color for top and bottom, I think either one of these really works well for the backing. 
I like how the pink stands out. Me too. A little bit more. Me too. Which will be really fun texture mm -hmm. when it's finally on my couch. Yes. And look what just flew into the table. <laughs> this is our actual bottom, bottom line, line for Ooh. the bobbin. I'm not sure how it got here, but here we go. When we put it on there, look how much of a difference that makes even from the 40 weight. It just will- It melts in. It just melts in. So we're not gonna be overpowered with thread on the back. And I just cannot wait to show you guys when this quilt is finished. Oh, it's gonna be so cozy. It's gonna be so good. Obviously she makes gorgeous quilts. <laughs> so, all right, I guess we're gonna go with hot pink. Yes, the hot pink. I'm bringing her to the hot pink side of the world. I like it. Me too. Let me do it. All right, let's talk about the next one. Okay. Okay. Okay guys, this is gonna be our last quilt that we talk about today. And it's another gorgeous quilt pieced by Emily. Hi. Um, just take a look. I think we all know what fabrics these are. Yes, but these are leftovers from the bellies of the robot quilt. So yeah. cute. I love it. Have you thought at all about what color thread you might wanna do for this one? No. This is another one that can be a little <laughs> tricky because it's got a lot of colors in it, right? And I think we should try some softer shades, like almost pastel, because that's kind of the feel of the quilt, right? Yeah. So what do we have over there? Can we start with the green? Yes, because it matches the- I love green. It, it matches the border fabric. The border fabric, and it may not be very- It's very subtle. Yes. But I kind of love it. I do too. What do you think? It's very cute. Now, I see in your stash over there, you kind of have a seafoam color. Let's look at that one because we do have a lot of turquoise and aqua, my favorite color. And so let's see how this one looks. Oh. Mm. What do you think? I kind of love that one too. I can't, I, I feel like the lighter green now is starting mm -hmm. to read more white. More white. Now that we have another contrasting color yes. on there. Yes, and I think that's- Even though they're very similar. I think that's because the aqua colored one is a little bit more saturated, so it has a little bit more color to it. So mm. it's gonna show up a little bit more on the white sashing and not look as white as the green because the green is gonna read a little bit more on the white side. Can we do my favorite color yes. next? Yes, let's try lavender. Yes. You are a purple girl. I am. All right. Ooh. What do you think? I mean, I love purple. Yeah. That one does also kind of lean a little bit towards white. It does. But it's not bad. I don't know if I love it on the turquoise because it reads more white. It does. It kind of takes away the lavender. It makes it look more like a white thread than lavender. Um, and you pulled pink I because we love pink. pink. This is a baby pink, so we'll see. I have a feeling it's going to be the same as the green and the lavender and read a little bit white. Yeah. And it actually, I think it reads even more white than the other ones. Um, and look at that, a lovely darker lavender just flew in um, from the Thread Fairy. So let's see how this one looks. It's just a little bit darker than the first lavender. So oh. let's see if we can put them next to each other. So this is the light one. And this is the one that's a little bit darker. There's not a huge difference. No. But the darker one actually reads more lavender than white. Yes. So if you like that, for me, I would probably go with the little bit darker one instead of the light one so you get a little bit more color and it's a little bit more noticeable. What do you think about that one? See, now I'm debating between the lavender or the blue. Yes. Because the blue has a just a slight bit more color right without yeah. it being contrasting right because sometimes like for me when I'm piecing contrasting gives your eye somewhere to move right but for quilting contrasting sort of makes you cringe a little bit more. it can be a little overwhelming 
Yeah. Right? We don't really want to just see the thread color. So we want the quilting to complement. Right. But not, not overpower. Yeah. So which one do you think is your favorite? I kind of like the blue. Me too. Oh, we agree! <laughs> that, one was, that one was my favorite from the beginning. Um, I really, really thought I was going to like the green because when I first saw your quilt, my first instinct was to match this kind of acidy green mm. because we love a good acid green color. But it's just not quite enough for me. Yeah. It doesn't really do a lot on our other fabrics where I think the aqua really looks great on there. Yeah. So you think that's the one you like? I think so. I think so too. Now have you picked a backing for this one? I have not. Oh, so it's time to go shopping. We should go shopping. Okay. Well guys, I hope you <laughs> had fun today and you learned a lot from us and hopefully we weren't too awkward because it is our first time. <laughs> But hopefully you will see a lot more of us in the future. So the next time you're in Vegas, I hope you'll come by and see us at the shop. We are located at 2475 West Cheyenne, Suite 220. And we would love to quilt for you. We would love for you to come just hang out with us and do a little shopping. And we're always here to help. If you guys have any questions, please leave us a comment below. And if you have any ideas for future videos for us or things that you would like to learn more about, please also leave us a comment and we'll do our best to make a video to help you out. If you ever need anything and you're not in Vegas, you can always find us online at orchidellquilts.com. And I would just really like to thank Emily today for being in the video with me and making me a little less awkward maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. That's gonna be the end, okay. right? Yeah. She's gonna roll some credit. <laughs> yeah. And it's gonna be like, and it'll be like, oh. Okay. Ooh.